Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Code One Digest. Today in this video we will learn what is open close principle. Yes friend, we will see what is the use cases of open close principle and I'll show you the Java code implementation of open close principle and we will also understand the benefits of open close principle in a project. So stay tuned and watch this video till end. It is going to be very informative and very exciting. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about single responsibility principle. Can you explain what is single responsibility principle and where to use it? Please provide your answer in the comment section of this video. If you have not seen the previous video, I would recommend you to go and watch the previous video. The link is there on your screen and also given in the description section of this video. So go and watch the previous video. Just to recall the single responsibility principle. SRP states that a class should have one and only one reason to change. So for the more information, please go and watch the previous video. Friends, here is the agenda for the today. So I will give you introduction of open close principle. Then I'll show you the real world example of open close principle. We'll discuss few example of real world. Then I'll show you Java code implementation of open close principle. We will understand the usage of open close principle and where to use it. We will also see a benefit of open close principle. And then later I will summarize the whole video, all the concepts of open close principle. At the end, I will show you the brief introduction of next video on Lisco substitution principle. So stay tuned till end of this video. Friends, before we proceed in this video, I want you to subscribe my channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality contents for you, but I'm not getting subscribers. I want you to like, share and subscribe my channel so that I can grow Code One Digest family. Thank you. Okay, friends, let's begin with the open close principle. Let's understand what is open close principle. Open close principle is the second principle of solid principles. Open close principle states that software entities like classes, modules, or functions, etc., should be open for extension but closed for modifications. Right? Open close principle is mostly misunderstood for inheritance, but it is actually defined for the polymorphism. I'll explain. Because inheritance are closed for modification at runtime. And you can provide a new implementation or extend the functionality of your software only at compile time. You have to recompile the code and then pack your application. But polymorphism supports changing the behavior at runtime. Therefore, it is more supporting open close principle. In software development, the use of object oriented design with the solid principle is very crucial. It helps to write flexible, scalable and reusable code. It is recommended that developer follow the solid principle for their design and coding. Sir Robert C. Martin considered open close principle as the most important principle of object oriented design. But he was not the first who defined it. Sir Barton Mayer wrote about it in 1988 in his book Object Oriented Software Construction. He explained the open close principle. The general idea of open close principle is great. It tells you to write your code so that you will be able to add a new functionality without changing the existing code. So don't be mistaken the phrase open for extension only with inheritance because inheritance introduces the tight coupling if the subclasses depends on implementation details of the parent class. Hence, if parent class changing to so required changes into a subclass. Because if the superclass changes, then subclass may need to be modified. So we want to create classes and software entities whose behavior can be changed without recompiling the code itself. Hence, inheritance doesn't meet this requirement. Because inheritance decides the behavior at compile time and introduces a tight coupling between the parent and child classes. That's why Sir Robert C. Martin and others redefined the open close principle for the polymorphism. It uses interfaces instead of a superclass 
to allow different implementation which you can easily substitute at runtime without changing or recompiling the code. The main benefit of this approach is that an interface introduces an additional level of abstraction which enables the loose coupling instead of a tight coupling that we see with inheritance. The implementation of interfaces are independent of each other and don't share any code. Also remember, another way to achieve open close principle is via compositional design pattern, like what we see in strategy design pattern. Friends, now let's understand the open close principle with one of the real world example of mixer and extensions. So if you see in the diagram here, we have a mixer and we have different extensions to perform different jobs. So if I want to use different extensions, I can add as many extensions I want without modifying the mixer. Imagine if I have to modify the mixer for every new extension the customer demands, then that will be considered as a very close and tight coupling. Hence, the design is in such a way that extension can be anything and will work with the mixer and for every extension, we need not to change our mixer engine. This is a very classic example of open close principle where we are saying mixer is open for extension but close for modification. Hence, we can add as many extensions we want to perform different types of grinding and stirring and so on. But our mixer doesn't go any modification. Right? I hope this is clear. Friends, let's understand another example of open close principle. I have prepared a code for open close principle in Java and I have shared that code in my GitHub repository. You can download the code and play with it. The link of my repository is given on your screen and also provided in the description section of this video. So go and download the code and play with it. I'll give you the code walkthrough what I have done, how I have and what example I am going to discuss. Let me give you a brief understanding of that. Friends, I'm using Java 8 with IntelliJ ID to do this example. Let me show you what I have done. Let's consider building a calculator application that might have several operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and etc. So let's see the code and understand the open close principle. Friends, I have created a project for solid principles. And in that project, I have a package open close principle. And this project is available in my GitHub repository. You can download the code and play with it. Let me show you what is there inside this package. So I have all these classes that I have written create a calculator application let's understand that so first i have defined an interface in this interface i have defined only one operation that is one method i have defined only one method that is perform operation imagine if i write all the operation in this calculator class let's say addition subtraction multiplication and so on and make this a super class. So in future, if I have to add more operations like modulars and, and so on, any complex operations, if I modify the super class, my rest of the subclasses also will be impacted. Hence the approach, what I have done is, I have defined an interface, as we said, right? We will be using interface to achieve the open close principle and we'll have a, and number of implementation of this interface. So I have defined an interface calculator operations where I have defined a method perform operation and then I have different implementation of this interface that is so addition is implementing calculator operation and it is implementing the perform operation method where it is summing the two numbers which are provided. Same way I have subtraction multiplication and division 
so these are all implementation of same interface calculator operation now let us let us see what is there in calculator class so calculator class is a one level of abstraction that we have added where we have method calculate in that calculate method we are passing the, an instance of calculator operation interface so it can be this operation can be addition or subtraction or multiplication or division or any other operation coming up in the future this method this class is not going to be impacted so the operation instance is provided here and then this class is just calling a perform operation method of that class of that object hence this class calculator class is not impacted for any modification or extension in future this makes exactly what open close principle says that our classes our logic should be open for extension but closed for modification let's see a test class what we are doing in the test class so i have written a test class to test this logic where i have defined an instance of calculator and then i am doing different operations like addition so for addition i have initialized an instance of calculator operation where i am creating an instance of addition class by passing the two numbers and using calculator object i am calling the calculate method of calculator object by passing an instance of addition operation then same thing i am doing for subtraction multiplication and division let me run this code and see what happens we are taking an example here for number 10 and number 5 as a input let me run this for you is building the code now let's see what it happens yes so here is the result what we get for addition it is summing the two number and giving the result 15 for subtraction it is giving a result 5 for multiplication it is giving a result 50 and division it is giving a result 2 so likewise in the future we can create as many operations we want by implementing the calculator operation interface hence this is pure example of open for extension and close for modification we are not modifying our calculator class and we could independently add any extension any future operation without impacting the existing functionality in our application right with me friends okay friends a very first question comes to our mind where to use open close principle in our project how do we know what is the application of this pattern this principle in our project so use open close principle whenever you want to have multiple implementation of same algorithm like what we saw in the example of calculator right use open close principle whenever you want to remove tight coupling between the parent and the child classes use open close principle whenever you want new modification should not break existing functionalities use open close principle whenever you want loose coupling between your software component right okay friends so now let understand the advantages of open close principle open close principle allows multiple implementation of same algorithm open close principle uses interface remove the tight coupling between the parent and child classes and we can add more implementation of that interface open close principle allows to add new feature without modifying existing features open close principle introduces the loose coupling between the software component and that is good for our software design and implementation okay friends now let me summarize what we learned today in this video we understood what is open close principle we saw the real world examples of open close principle we also saw java code implementation of open close principle where we understood the implementation of calculator application right we saw the use cases of open close principle where can we use it how can we apply open close principle in our project 
you also understood the benefits of open close principle so friends let me know if you have already used open close principle in any of your project or seen a scenario where this principle can be very useful so please provide your answer in the comment section of this video friends in the next video we will learn about lisco substitution principle yes friends in next video i'll show you what is lisco substitution principle we understand the usage of lisco substitution principle i'll show you the java code implementation of lisco substitution principle and we'll discuss the benefits of lisco substitution principle so stay tuned for the next video and do subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel friends if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues this is very useful information for students beginners and software engineers i am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents so please help me growing the code one digest family please subscribe to code one digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos thank you